Hey everybody, Ashton here with Sense on a rainy day. Today we're going to be taking a look at a fragrance from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian that has been a little bit hyped. Some people seem to really love it, other people seem to really hate it. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my take, and that fragrance is Baccarat Rouge 540. This has notes of cedar, jasmine, saffron, ambergris, but it's not the type of fragrance where you really pick up a specific note that leads into another specific note. It's really well blended and just comes together to make its own kind of fragrance. So this one is better just kind of describing how it smells instead of breaking down what notes lead into what notes. The fragrance itself is slightly subdued. Now it lasts for a long time. I'm talking eight plus hours, you can still pick up whiffs, but even early on, this sits fairly close to the skin. It's not something that's gonna project out very far. It's more of a subdued fragrance in the sense that it's not a projection monster. It does last, like I said, it's just not a beast. It's something where people are going to need to get closer to you, need to get into your proximity before they're going to pick it up, at least off my skin. Now, if you've looked up reviews of this online, I'm sure you've seen people say that it reminds them of cotton candy or cotton floss, that it's super sugary sweet. Now, I do understand where everybody's coming from that says that. I don't get it 100%, you know, it's not like Pink Sugar by Aqualina, for example. It's not a straight up cotton candy scent, but it does have a bit of a sugary sweet vibe that's going to remind you of candy floss. And to my nose, when it opens up, I get almost this minerally mint scent. Now I know mint isn't a note and it rides underneath everything else, but it's got kind of a, a sweet minerally vibe with a minty undertone. It's a hard to describe scent, uh, but hopefully if you smell this, you'll understand what I'm trying to get across. As the fragrance dries down, you start to get some woody notes that come in that make it a little more masculine than it is in the opening. That salty kind of mineral vibe from the open carries on through the dry down and there's a little bit of a masculine jasmine that you can pick up too. Uh, the fragrance to an extent reminds me of like a crushed fine glass. Now I'm not saying that it necessarily smells like what that would smell like, it just kind of makes me think of that. Well, this one has gotten some hype. Now my best advice to you would be to go ahead and sample this first. Before I got this bottle, I ran through at least three official samples of this fragrance. So it's not something that I went in smelling blind and I would suggest you to do the same. And this one was provided to me by Europerfumes.com. I'll leave a link in the description where you can purchase this if you want to. They did just come out with the giant 200 ml size bottle of these. So this is the 70 ml. That's kind of the standard size for Maison Francis Kirchhoff. Um, I have a couple of 200 mils from this house like Aqua Vitae and Aqua Universalis, so they're a great deal bigger and it would last you pretty much forever. The fragrance to me comes across as something that's better suited for semi-formal and formal wear. Now that's not to say that you couldn't wear it casually if you wanted to. I mean, if you want to wear this one casually, it's not something that's uh, so formal that you couldn't pull it off in that situation. It just, to me, smells like something that really should be at least slightly dressed up. Age range for me, this smells like something that would be better suited for somebody at least in their lower 20s and up, if not mid 20s and up. Now this fragrance can be really divisive. I've read online on Facebook groups, on forums. It seems like a lot of people hate the fragrance. A lot of people love the fragrance. And most of the things that I've read seem to point toward the opening, the really sweet opening that some people say smells like cotton candy or candy floss. Uh, if you really don't like fragrances that can trend sweet, especially sugary sweet, then you should definitely sample this one first. Personally, I do not find the opening too feminine. I think that it's easily worn, but just be aware that there's a good amount of people out there who would disagree with what I'm telling you. So my wife really likes this fragrance. Personally, I really like it too. I actually chose this fragrance as the fragrance to wear to my son's fifth grade graduation. I know, I don't look that old. So you can probably tell which way I'm trending on this one. I'm going to be siding with the people that really like the fragrance as opposed to those that dislike it. Not that there's anything wrong with having a difference of opinion. I'm going to give this fragrance an 8.5 out of 10. 
For me, it's a really, really nice fragrance that's easy to wear formally or semi-formally. Like I said, you could wear it casually if you wanted to. It kind of gives me a nice change because a lot of the fragrances that I would wear formally are a little darker or a little deeper. And this is kind of the polar opposite of that. So it's a fragrance that I can spray on, especially in milder weather when I'm dressed up formally and have something that's gonna stand out against the crowd. All right, guys, that is my review of Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirchian. If you've smelled this fragrance, let me know what you think about it. As always, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.